Alright guys, today we're going to get into a contentious topic in graffiti that I see a lot of newer writers in the comments section skitzing out about. And that is choosing a graffiti word or name that's already taken or doubling up words. Now I see huge and pointless 15 long comment debacles in my comment section about people telling others halfway around the world not to write something because they know someone somewhere else is writing it and most of the time it doesn't fucking matter. Sometimes it's warranted, sometimes it's not, but I thought I'd share a few of my thoughts on the topic. As I have to disclaim before every video to get into people's heads, this is not my rules. I really don't care what you go out and write. Um, but it's just my opinions, some experience that I have that may help some people out. So let's get into the video. Now this topic is all about context and you have to understand before you start that most likely someone somewhere is using the same word as you. If not the same word, a very similar word to yours in terms of letters. And I would bet money that common words like crash, sick, scum, at least 10 people around the world are occupying that word. A quick Google search will tell you that. So now that you know this, should you research till your balls fall off a word that no one in the history of graffiti has ever taken? Fuck no, because these people are most likely halfway around the world that it doesn't matter. There are only very specific instances where it will matter, which I'll explain right now. So let's start at the smaller scale. Within your city, if you're choosing a word for the first time, it's pretty simple. Don't choose a name that's already occupied by a graffiti writer in your city. You're within the same scene, you're competing for the same space, so that person is not going to appreciate someone with the exact same name blowing in on their spots. Even if you have completely different styles, it's a sign of respect not to double up with someone who's come before you. Sometimes two people with the same name can coexist within the same city, but they've agreed on it beforehand. Um, but for the most part, hop off the internet and start learning the names of people in your city so you choose something different. Now this is where the phrase learn your history comes into play because writers that might not be active anymore, it's still in bad taste to go and use their name as well. You may have no idea who they are, you may have never seen any of their shit, they may have been around 20 years before you even were born, it doesn't matter, it's still considered stepping on their toes and a lot of older writers, maybe even newer ones, won't appreciate you doing that. So learn the names of the writers past and present in your city and choose something that's different to all of them. The next scale is from city to city. In Australia or America, it might be state to state. In some smaller countries, maybe major city to major city. But the point to be made is try not to double up on the major writers in each city. That's because usually they're getting up a lot, their photos, their videos, or whatever are circulating, so most people across the country will know their name. And if you start writing their word, it's possible no beef will occur, but when you tell people that that's your name, they'll most likely think you're a bit of a Muppet because they'll be like, don't you know, that's a pretty big person in that city. You don't need to learn all the writers across your country, but be aware of the major ones because you don't want your legacy to fall under the name of someone else's who's already going hard. And at this point, it's probably important to mention that if you are going to be doubling up on a word, it's most likely going to fall under the radar if that word is a common or everyday word like crash or sick or whatever I mentioned before. If it's a unique word or a made up word, then it's much harder to get away with. So keep that in mind moving forward. All right, and last up is country to country. It's only the writers that are known internationally that doubling up on their name is going to be a problem. It might be different in Europe where the countries are closer together, but definitely if you live in America and you're using a name of a writer in Australia or New Zealand or vice versa, it doesn't fucking matter. Even if that person is pretty big over there or pretty big over here, no one is really going to care either way because your paths are never going to cross. And even if that writer becomes aware of that other person, I can guarantee you they won't be fucked enough to do anything about it because again, that person lives halfway across the world. In this day and age, in some cases, it's not the writers that are getting up the most that are known internationally, it's the writers with the big online presence, where their photos, their videos, their antics are getting circulated due to whatever social media, Instagram, YouTube, um, that it becomes a problem. Once again, not because any beef will occur, but just because if you tell someone you're writing that, they're going to either think A, you're stupid enough not to know who that bigger person is, or B, you're just a fanboy living in that person's shadow. And in your own mind, why would you want to do that? Have a word where anything that you do is going to automatically be attributed to someone else just because you have the same name. 
Some examples would be, you know, the NYC legends like Cope, Scene, JA. Writing those names would be pretty stupid. But even kind of more current writers like Horfe, Soffles, Katsu, Revoke, their photos, their videos, their online presence is pretty global that again, writing those names would be kind of redundant. Even YouTube people, no matter your thoughts on them, they've built a large global audience that you might get some funny looks writing words like ghost or doke if you did, even though ghost is a pretty common word. But it's all very debatable and a lot of the time people in that specific country are overprotective and overestimate how much people give a shit globally about their writers. So the best measure I can give you um, for any of this, the absolute best measure, I sound like a salesman, but the best measure is to see if you're getting backlash from the people in your city. Never mind about what's happening on the internet or people halfway around the world telling you not to write something. If you're doubling up on a word from a different country or even a different state and no one gives a shit from your city, you're not getting any funny looks. Um, when you tell people you're not getting crossed out on the regular, then by all means keep writing it. For example, Keep6 from the Stomp Down Killers, he's pretty popular on Instagram and YouTube, so you would expect his reach to be quite global, but I can guarantee you at least 10 people around the world write Keep and have never run into any problems. That's because the writers in those cities, they might be aware of Keep6 from Canada, but he's from halfway across the globe, so they don't think twice if someone from their city starts writing it. Plus, keep is a pretty common word. Like I stated, it might be a bit different if the word was is not or something a bit more unique. There's always going to be double ups. The internet has made us more aware of writers from all around the world and what they write, but that shouldn't stop you from going out and using your word. It's only when you start out that this really worries people. If you've been writing for five years, then you find out another person is writing the same thing from across the globe. I can guarantee you at that point, you won't really care. So a quick recap. Bottom line, if it's in your city, do your research and choose a word that's different. Any double ups outside of your city, 90% of the time, it won't matter. If you're getting backlash in the streets, then maybe it's time for you to change. But if people online are hassling you from halfway across the globe, like in YouTube or Instagram comments, don't worry about it. So that's about it for the video, guys. Hopefully this advice puts some people's mind at ease. Once again, before you get salty, I'm not an authority on this, so go ahead and double up if you want. This is just my knowledge and experience and observation of times when it would be okay and other times where you might come across as a bit of a grunt, but it's ultimately up to you. So thanks for watching. If you learned something, go ahead and leave a like and a comment below about your thoughts and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I might be coming at you with a kind of similar video about how to choose your graffiti name and just my thoughts around that. So let me know if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, until next time, I'll be coming at you with some more content like this, but stay tuned and peace out.